I have a lot of customers that return to me and I'm, I'm lucky enough to have that. And I didn't want them to feel like they were buying the same thing over and over again. What is up, Shaping Nation? This is Nick Torres here. And on this episode of Shaping Your Pottery, I got to interview Nat Natalie Curry. Natalie makes some really incredible face pottery that has some really cool facial features. In this episode, you will learn how Natalie makes her, her face pottery. You also learn about the impact this, her sister-in-law had on her business and her pottery. You also learn about if you're not in the mood, start try starting a new project to help you get in the mood to make pottery. Finally, you also learn about using seasons as themes for your pottery. And there's so much more in this episode, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll see you guys in there. Natalie, welcome to Shaping Your Pottery, and share with me, what is something you love besides making pottery? I recently got into snowboarding, actually, and I'm a big fan of that. I love that. So tell me a story how you got started in ceramics. So my husband took me to ceramics as a surprise date. <laughs> and basically the second that I started doing anything on the wheel, which I didn't know at all what I was doing, I was just playing around, but I just started laughing because it was so much fun and he created a monster. <laughs> I love that. So can you tell me the story how Pouty Pottery got started? Yes. So before Pouty Pottery, it was my own thing called Refined Ceramics. And I did that for a little over a year until my sister-in-law, who runs her own business called Rainbug, a lot of people started telling us that we should combine our styles. <laughs> and so we did just because we had so many requests and because we thought it would be fun. And that's that's how eventually it became Pouty Potteries because we acted on that. So... What obstacles did you face when you first started Pouty Pottery? Once it transitioned from refined ceramics, which was my thing, to Pouty Pottery, which was both of us, I think the biggest thing, and I'm sure she would agree with this, the biggest thing for us was that it was two creative brains coming together. So we would disagree on, like we'd agree on the core theme of the design, but there'd be little things that we disagree on where sometimes we're like, let's just let our followers decide because we like couldn't pick on our own. It's hard to get two creative brains to pick on one thing. So that, that was definitely the biggest hardship. So you and your sister-in-law originally started Pouty Party, like you said, can you tell me the impact your sister-in-law had on you pursuing this further? Yes. So I was already pursuing ceramics without her, but specifically in pursuing this style, even though she's not part of it anymore, the impact is one, I, I still use the faces, which is definitely something that she brought to the business, but also just the general of we, I ended up pulling a lot of inspiration from the same places she did. So she's impacted me a lot, you know, the way that she kind of was the first one to introduce me to like all the cool things around us in nature. And once I started paying attention to that, it really started influencing, you know, the current style that I was working with. So she, she definitely still has a footprint in the business for sure. So let's oh, hold on. Phone's bugging out. Okay. So <laughs> let's, what advice would you give to someone trying to go full time with their own pottery? I would say, I would say to just be smart about it. I mean, it's always going to be a risk for sure. So something that I did with my own is I worked a full-time job and then was doing ceramics on the side. And, and so I would say, keep that job like as kind of a safety net, you know, until you feel like it's stable enough as you build up the following, cause it's going to take a lot of patience. It's a really long buildup for sure. It's nothing that happens immediately. But if you think you can do it and if you're passionate enough, then go for it and, and also be okay with making sure that you're okay with doing it as a job rather than just a hobby. I love that. Shape Nation, you have to have patience if you are if you want to go full time. You don't jump into it like right away, but have patience and then commit to yourself when you do do it. I love that so much. So let's talk about your pottery. In one sentence, can you tell me what you make? Yes. So I mostly, I make functional mugs that are inspired by nature and incredibly detailed. <laughs> so to so tell me a story, how you started making this part of that you make today. So the style has transitioned a bit. I mean, I still carry the core of, you know, having all the different types of like faces or personalities as I call them 
but it's changed a lot in the sense that I've branched out in what types of faces. I also think it has become more detailed since Ray exited the business. It's always been really detailed, but I have learned every time I try to make something simple, I'm like, I'm going to keep this so simple halfway through. I also think, man, what would look great? 30 mushrooms on this. <laughs> and so I think I've kind of just accepted my style is not simple. So it has become a lot more complex than it used to be. What did your faces used to look like before it started becoming more complex? The faces were fairly similar, although they were mostly like frowns. This year I started adding in smiles. And that's different because the frowns are like hand built onto the mug. Whereas the smiles are kind of engraved and carved into it. But there's all kinds of like, I don't know, little pouts. So it's still, I've still got the old frowns, but I am trying to add in those other emotions as well. So what made you start adding in these other emotions? I have a lot of customers that return to me and I'm, I'm lucky enough to have that. And I didn't want them to feel like they were buying the same thing over and over again. And so I wanted to give them more variety and also just because I get really tired of making the same thing over and over again. So that's why. How would you say that helped you just in your business in general? Like creating the different faces? Yes. It has helped branch out the audience because I've had people who come to my page and absolutely love the frowns, which is what it originally was. And then I've had other people be like, oh, I loved it. And then I saw the frown and it totally ruined it for me. And some people are like, oh, he's so sad. And other people love that it's sad. And so having the other faces, like the smile, people who don't necessarily like the frown have that option of being like, oh, well, it's a happy mug. I don't have to own something that looks so sad. You know what I mean? I love that. Shaping Nation, you don't have to be stuck making the same things over and over and over again. If you want to start changing some things up, you can start doing that. And there's always an audience out there for you. I love that so much. So as you mentioned earlier, you are inspired by nature. How does this impact the way you make your pottery? It gets me in that creative style of thinking. I cannot create if I'm not in the mood to do so. It really shows in my work. And so for me, if I'm not feeling creative, I can go for a walk or for a hike and I can see anything. I mean, I can see a mushroom or a tree or even wood that just looks pretty to me. And I immediately start thinking, how would I put that on clay? Like, how would that look? And how would it look when I added color to it? So Honestly, almost anything around me can kind of spark that idea of how would I put this onto a mug. So so you mentioned that you, if you're not in the right mood to make the pottery, then it's just harder for you to make. Outside of going on a hike or like sometimes when you can't go on a hike and walk, what do you do to get into the mood to help you get into the studio? Yeah, a lot of it, some of it just comes down to discipline, like knowing like, if I'm dragging my feet on it at one point, but then knowing once I get into it, I'll feel excited about it. Or other times it's starting a new idea. So if there's, if I'm supposed to work on one thing, but I'm more excited about a new idea that I have, I'll allow myself to step out of that schedule and work on the new idea because then I start getting really excited about how it's coming along. And then I'm excited enough. I can go back to the old work and continue from there. I love that so much. Shaping Nation, if you have something that you've been working on, but a new idea sparks in your head, go chase that new idea, see where it takes you, and then it'll allow you to be more excited to come back for the other stuff. I love that so much. So as you mentioned earlier, you add a variety of faces to your mugs. Can you tell me why you decided to use faces as your core theme? Yeah, so that was definitely, that is Ray's, that's my sister-in-law. She brought that to the business because she saw this pot at a store near us. We were shopping and, and this, it was a planter, I think. And it had this super grumpy face, this big old nose and everything. And she liked it so much that she started doing her own thing on polymer clay and making these cute little mushroom figurines, which she's Rainbug for anyone who doesn't know. And since she, since we were combining styles, that was the biggest part of her style that she brought in. And even though she decided to do, you know, continue just doing her own thing and, and leave the ceramic business with me, we built up so many followers that were specifically following for that style. And it just didn't feel right to the followers to change that again. So that's why we, that's why I've kept it as the core theme to just keep it fair for the followers and then just kind of put my own twist on it. So what is something you're doing to evolve the even further? I know you mentioned you're adding different 
face facial features, but what else are you doing? For pottery specifically, it I'm trying to not trying out this year I've been doing more themes. So like I've been doing more before I was making just whatever I thought would be cute, something that I like. But this year I've been doing kind of like collections where I did like a warm seasons collection. So it was all summer items. Like I made a mug that had a, like a camping scene on the background of it. And then I made a, a mug that looks like a s'mores. Whereas now I'm going to probably go into like a spooky seasons collection that's strictly like Halloween themed. So I've been doing a lot more themed stuff so that people can kind of, I don't know, sort of shop by collection throughout the year, if that makes sense. I love that. Shape Nation, if you're ever having trouble with picking a theme for your pottery, have the theme be the season that you're currently in. So if it's winter, try doing a winter theme. If it's summer, do a summer theme and just stick with that and do that throughout the year year and you're going to be able to have a lot of refreshing ideas as well i love that so much so could you explain to me how you create your faces and your designs onto your pottery yeah so all of my mugs are will thrown and then after i will throw it like i said it's really it's a lot of hand building work where which is funny because i'm not a hand builder like at all <laughs> but all you know i you roll the eyes in the ball you have to put on the eyebrows onto it and and meanwhile one of the biggest things in creating the piece is that since i do i'm hand building all the detail onto the outside like moss mushrooms whatever it may be trees sometimes that can make the mug super heavy so i need to throw it really light so that's that's in the mugs it's it's so many small steps it's like throw it light, <laughs> trim it as light as you can, handled onto it. And then I do glazes, fire it, add more under glazes, glaze it again. It's a whole process. So can you go into a little bit more detail on how you actually apply the faces? Yeah, that's pretty standard. It's just like slipping and scoring, all of that. So rolling up the eyes, you roll it into just a couple of little balls. You try to make sure that they're even, that they match each other slip it and score it onto the piece and then I get another slab of clay not a huge slab just not like one that needs a roller just one you can do with your hands you roll that out flatten it and then you just cover part of the eye to get whatever kind of eyebrow facial expression because a lot of the expression is in those kind of like eyebrows that also kind of work on eyelids on my pieces and then the mouth it depends on which type of mouth I'm doing some of them I can draw on like I said or carve others it's just about another grabbing like a, like a small piece of clay and then I just use my fingers to kind of form that pout same thing slip and score and attach and then all the other details it's that same thing it's just shaping it with my hands like the mushrooms adding stems with slipping and scoring it's a lot of slipping and scoring <laughs> what would you say is the hardest part about this entire process the hardest part I honestly think the hardest part is throwing. I think that's the part that takes the most skill because that's what took me the longest to learn. As far as hand building goes, I feel like with what I do anyways, there's a lot of room for error. So if I mess up, I don't have to put it on the piece. So there is more flexibility there. Whereas on the wheel, <laughs> it's like you throw it and you mess up and there's not that much wiggle room there. So I definitely, I think throwing is, is the hardest part to get down and the rest of it, I think just comes with experience. I definitely agree. Wheel throwing could definitely be a challenge in itself. It's yeah. definitely the hardest thing to probably learn in pottery. So let's talk about discovering your voice. Can you tell me about the moment when you knew you were heading in the right direction with your pottery? I don't know if there was an exact moment. The whole reason why I started the business was just because I was... I was so into ceramics that I just wanted to keep creating, but I did not have more room for ceramics in my house. And so I was like, well, I need to do something with this. And I only have so many friends that I can give these pieces away to. So I'll just start selling it and see what happens. And then I just started to slowly build a consistent following. And it was kind of like, once I saw that people were actually buying my items, even though it was small at the start and seeing how excited they were when they received it, that's, when I like once people started sharing my excitement about the items, that's when I was like, okay, like I think I have something here that could make a lot of people happy and also solves my issue of needing to keep creating without filling up my entire house of ceramics. I love that. So you contribute your growth as an artist to self teaching. Can you tell me more about this? Yes. So as I mentioned earlier, my husband is the one who took me into ceramics as a surprise date but he did not really know how to teach me. And the problem is I outgrew him really fast because 
as you know, pottery is an endless world <laughs> of learning. There are so many different ways to do the same one thing. And there's so many different like strategies that you can do and artistic styles. And so I, since he couldn't help me and I, I just couldn't afford classes at the time and I wasn't sure what I was doing with it anyways, it was a lot of, I got my own wheel really quick because I, there's not a, a good studio around us really. And so I got my own wheel so I could practice at home. I started just doing YouTube like John the Potter or Earth Nation Ceramics. Thank goodness they've made those wonderful videos. And it was a lot of, honestly, it took me way too long to figure it out. I would not recommend self-teaching, but it was a lot of me just kind of following along with their videos and feeling what does feel right, what doesn't. Because once you get going, it feels pretty obvious. You know when it's working and, and when it's not. So it was a lot of experimenting for me. And I did that for the first three years of ceramics, actually. I love that. Shape Nation, if you can't afford to, you know, maybe go take a workshop and go learn pottery, the best thing you do is just start experimenting. Start coming up with things so you can create the pottery that you want to make. I love that. So what advice would you give to someone trying to discover their own unique voice with their pottery? I would say branch out. Use all the media platforms. Facebook groups are amazing. And there are so, so many for ceramics. Reach out to fellow potters because in the ceramic community, I my experience is that people are really friendly. Most people are incredibly willing to help because I think we all remember how hard it is and that we've all been there. And like and and use it's consistent content to get your voice out there. I think everything runs by the internet these days, unfortunately. And so got to post consistently in all the platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff that none of us like doing, but that's very important to get your voice out there. So what advice would you give to someone trying to, that wants to reach out to more potters? What, what would you have them say? I've had people reach out to me and they'll say something as simple as, Hey, I'm just barely starting. Or sometimes they're sweet enough to say, Hey, you inspired me. I got my own will. What would you recommend? And, and I personally will just send them like YouTube links of stuff that I watched, but I would just reach out and say, Hey, I really admire your stuff. I'm starting ceramics myself. Or is there any tips you'd recommend for someone who's a beginner who doesn't can't really afford classes? And I can't imagine anyone wouldn't respond to that. Well, like I said, potters are pretty awesome. Yeah, definitely agree. Shape Nation, the most important thing after you have that message is just to hit send. It's scary, but you have to hit that <laughs> send button. I promise you it will be worth it in the end. So as we're coming to a close here today, what is one thing you want to hammer home with my audience today? I think the biggest thing is to stay creative and not just like even on any art platform, right? But thinking outside the box is so important because if you think about it, we wouldn't have even half of the things that we have today, if people weren't thinking outside of the box or staying creative in inventing things, even outside of art. And so that's the most important thing. You never know who you're going to inspire, what it could potentially lead to, or even if it just brings someone joy. So stay creative. That's super, super important. So I know I, I said that was the last question, but what do you do to stay creative? All those things, all, I look up new techniques on ceramics a lot. And if I feel like I've maxed out, so like when I was self-teaching myself and I did that for the first three years, eventually I got to the point where I was like, okay, I don't think I can teach myself anything more. I've kind of maxed that out. So then I started looking into advanced classes around me to see how I could just keep pushing that skills because people are also paying you for your skill set. And so I think it's important that you kind of keep increasing in that. And, and once, I mean, and once you do that, it's like a whole new chapter because you're around other potters around you seeing what they're doing. You're like, Oh, that's so cool. I bet I could do this. And so th that's a lot of what I do is just new techniques. There's so much to discover in the ceramics world. It's never ending. Absolutely love it. Shape Nation, stay creative, keep learning and keep growing. I love that so much. Natalie, it was so great chatting with you today. Where can my audience go and learn more about you? At, on Instagram is where I'm the where I'm the most active. So just at poutypottery.com.